Okay, there's a bit of an overlay, um, uh, you know, a clash, but I'm happy that uh, the NA has uh, completed, has finished its business. Um, so, um, so the colleagues from that side um, will uh, uh, sign in at any time. So it means that uh, the colleagues from the NSOP will be delayed a bit um, because of the sitting overlapping uh, into this meeting. Now, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Rita. Oh, my electricity has gone off. What's the term now? I didn't know. Okay. Clock. Oh, I hope I'm. Not deeper. That's okay. Yes, sir. Am I still audible? Yes, sir. You are. Oh, okay. My electricity has gone off. Mm. So it means that I would be in the dark for the next uh, two hours. So please allow me to keep my video uh, uh, off. Um, all right, uh, so I'll do that. Um, otherwise it will uh, affect the network. Uh, let me do it now, thank you. All right, colleagues, um, these are the items uh, for tonight. Basically, we are meeting the Defense uh, Industries uh, Association, um, Aeroplace, Maritime and Defense Industries uh, Association um, to take um, a presentation on the challenges and opportunities including um, uh, issues of cooperation with uh, the, the NCACC, um, and, and, and also receive uh, uh, a briefing on the uptake of and training on the NCACC electronic permit application. We're excited when Chair, you are breaking. I cannot hear anybody now, Nandipa. Chairperson, you are not on. Chairperson, Chairperson, we have totally lost you, eh? Yeah, you totally, you totally disappeared and then very, very broken. Uh, so we couldn't follow a word that you were saying. And then Deepa, so are the chair on the on the on the on the uh, platform? Yes, he's still on the platform, but he's not audible audible yeah, because yeah. he has whole load shedding. Yes, but I'm talking about the coach here. Oh no, not yet. Oh, okay, so he's not here. Okay. Uh, we can't hear him at all. And Mr. Mutley, is he on the platform? He's also not here. Okay. I will try and call someone. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I nominate Maria to be the chair for tonight, please.
Well, I think maybe maybe we must not deeper. Just um, postpone for about five minutes. See if you can get the chair or any of the chairs um, in touch with them and see whether they can have another connection. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Apologies to our guests. I see he has joined the meeting. Mr. Mute, thank you. Mr. Mute, are you available? Nandipa, it doesn't seem to be online. I'm trying to call him because he did log in. Yeah, he logged in, but, but he's muted. Mr. Mutley, uh, you're muted, if you can hear me. Uh, he's logged on, but he's not signed on. Um, if you can please give Mr. Mute a few more seconds, he will start the meeting just now. Sorry, apologies for that.
um, Nandi Pa, can you hear me now? Yes, Chair, we can hear you loud and clear. The meeting has not started, is it? No, Chair, we were still waiting for Mr. Mutli. Oh, okay. So I'm back uh, using um, uh, different uh, gadgets. No, that, that is fine. Um, let's hope um, um, it's not, the system is not, going, is not going to kick me out. All right, colleagues, um, in terms of the numbers, are we uh, okay now? Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair, we are. Okay. Yes. Colleagues, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my apologies for what has happened. Um, the uh, load shedding started at uh, load shedding started at, at six year. I didn't know. Um, so I was actually briefing you on the two items um, that we are dealing with today. The mainly they mainly relate to the uh, aeroplanes. Uh, aer sorry, aer Um, a presentation okay, on yes, sir. Okay, president, we have lost you again. You have started yes, with Aero. Aero. No. Okay. Um, how... there you break, you're breaking up again. You, 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 you're, break, you. you're breaking up again. Okay. What mistake is now? Um, <laughs> hey, Tabo. Yes, Tabo. Tabo. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm oh, in the really? meeting. Yeah. yeah, in the meeting. Uh, I have a, a challenge here. Can you run it from that side? Okay. Uh, you were just explaining, uh, you were, were you introducing only the, the item? Yes, as, as they are reflected on the agenda. Okay, no, 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 it's fine, Chair. Let me, let me uh, uh, assist. Okay, uh, sure. Yeah, uh, evening, uh, uh, honorable members and colleagues, uh, I... I just joined a few minutes after the chair has opened the meeting. Uh, yeah, we'll just run straight. I hope uh, the chair welcomed uh, all of you into this meeting and has uh, uh, dealt uh, with the uh, apologies. Uh, Nandipa, has uh, the apologies being rendered? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Maybe let's go to item two and check. Uh, uh, probably the quorum is there for the meeting. Okay, if you can yes. confirm, so we. All right, we yes. can then uh, can then deal with apologies. Good evening, Chairperson, Honourable Members, the Minister, and everyone in the platform. Um, we've got three apologies from Ms. Bartlett and Ms. Ngosi. Um, they will. They are still in the NCOP plenary and will attend um, a study group afterwards. And then the other apology is from the content advisor who is um, on his way to Cape Town from the CSIR conference. That's all the apologies I have. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you very much, uh, 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 colleagues. Can we grant them those apologies? Chairperson Mutapo, granted. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mutapo. Uh, the host has muted me. Uh, okay, fine. I've managed to unmute myself. All right. Uh, well, then, uh, uh, the Joint Standing Committee today. Uh, uh, colleagues will be receiving a briefing by uh, Aerospace Maritime and Defense Industry Association (AMD). Uh, the first one will be on industries, challenges, and opportunity. Uh, the second uh, presentation will be uh, the feedback from them uh, on the uptake of. Uh, 
training on the uh, NCACC uh, electronic permit application system. Uh, those are the two uh, presentation uh, that we will receive today from AMD. Uh, do we have a representative from AMD? Oh, let me check. Is the minister in the meeting? I must not. Uh, is the minister? I've seen the deputy. Yes, minister. yes, yes, Che. Um, she is in the meeting. Uh, Good afternoon, Che. Yeah, uh, afternoon. Uh, it's your, it's your industry minister. Uh, you can, uh, you can take a lead. The, 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 it is one of those that uh, um, don't necessarily rely on the department, but without them, we would not survive. So whatever it is that uh, the challenges in the whole industry as a whole affect us, we want to be happy to see the improvements in their fortunes because then the improvement in our well-being as defense will start. Um, I have not seen their, their presentation, but uh, I just thought that I should be around because um, we have been threatening to have a uh, an, a Likotla before we break for December. I'm not sure how feasible it, it is with all the challenges that we have. But um, I would simply say, yes, uh, Chair, um, it's good that we are, we are here. And it is also good that the issues around the NCACC um, also looked at. Um, perhaps we, we might also be getting to get feedback that we might be able to look at as we sit as the committee on the NCACC. Otherwise, I have not much to add, Chair just to wish us all a good meeting. Thank you. All right, no, thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, part of your role that you forgot to mention, as much as they don't uh, uh, report directly to the department, as a department you have a responsibility to ensure that the, the environment that they operate in is conducive. Uh, and make it a point that uh, they are able to thrive, to thrive uh, 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 in that space. And part of uh, our no responsibility is to ensure uh, that uh, there's transformation in that space and AMD must uh, work hand in hand with uh, the department to ensure that uh, uh, that materializes. With, with, with that said, uh, 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 colleagues, I think uh, we can call upon the representative. I'm not sure who will be leading the, is it the board or the CEOs present in the meeting, whoever who will be taking uh, the platform, if uh, they might take the opportunity to also introduce the team from AMD, we would appreciate that. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chair. A, a very good evening, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, good evening to the Honorable Minister, the Deputy Minister, and all other senior officials from the Department of Defense uh, present. And a very good evening uh, to the AMD board and all other players within the industry as led by the chairperson of the AMD board, uh, Ms. Nomba Sandlov. Honorable Chair, my, my name is Sandy Lendlovu. I am the Interim Executive Director for the Industry Association, and I've been tasked by the board to take the Joint Standing Committee through a presentation that has been prepared. We did submit the presentation in advance, so I hope Honorable Members did have an opportunity to quickly just glance through the presentation, and we also submitted a supporting documentation just as an anecdotal additional information in support uh, of the presentation. Uh, Chair, for simplicity, we've combined the two items into one presentation. So we will be affording the Joint Standing Committee one presentation as opposed to two. 
I am not sure whether I do have the powers to share the screen, uh, Sisman Deepa, or you will do that from your end. Um, yes, we do. I have made you a co-host, so you can share. Thank you. Okay. I am trying to share. It says the host has disabled participant screen sharing. If you may just kindly give me those powers, ma'am, I, I will then share the presentation. Okay, you can try again. No, I think it's it's clear now. C can I confirm if my screen is visible to all present? Yeah, it is visible. Yes. You may proceed. Yes, Thank it's visible. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. And, and once again, a, a very good evening, Honorable Members. Uh, on behalf of the South African defense industry as ably led by the Industry Association, we, we thank you for, for affording us this opportunity uh, to bring you up to speed with the three issues that you had directed us uh, to brief you on in, in the letter that, 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 that we received. The, 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 the scope is in line with the directive that we had been given on, on, on briefing the Joint Standing Committee on the challenges that the industry is facing, and, and most importantly, the opportunities that we as industry have identified and, and then provide uh, feedback on the two issues as they appear, the cooperation with the NCACC and, and the electronic permit uh, application system. So it, it's gonna be a very, brief but detailed presentation covering the issues as, as they appear before you. We, we, we also then felt it was important just to refresh. We have briefed the portfolio committee, the joint standing committee before. You are intimately familiar with the South African defense industry, but it is always important that whenever an opportunity arise where we get to engage uh, with parliament, both houses of parliament, we should always reaffirm the, the special character of our South African defense industry. It is one of the industries that within the economic landscape of our country is, is highly regulated. And, and that is how it should be. Uh, it is highly regulated and, and that is how it should be. I think the only other industry that is Second, in terms of regulation, would be the nuclear uh, industry that, that South Africa also has. Small in size, but once again, a highly regulated uh, industry. And ours, uh, in terms of business, it's a function of politics more than anything else. And, and we are one of the few sectors, if not the only sector, where involvement of political actors is acceptable and encouraged. Uh, because we, we get our ability to transact through the permission that we get uh, granted by the NCACC, and the NCACC is comprised of political actors. Uh, we see the world over that for defense industries uh, to thrive, they require political actors to lobby for them, actively lobby and, and support them. So, so we are very unique in, in that regard uh, from other e economic uh, sectors. We are also a function of, of diplomacy. We, we, we provide an avenue for, for our state to discharge its diplomatic mandate and its diplomatic uh, ability. And if, if properly uh, supported, we, we then can become an industry that generates uh, between 15 and 20 billion US dollars uh, per annum. And, and these are, are conservative estimates. When, when we touch on the opportunities later on, you will then realize that uh, South African manufactured defense and security equipment is still well sought after the world over. Uh, about two months ago, uh, we had AAD and the interest uh, of, of, of clients on South African produced uh, goods was very visible to all who were present at AAD. We, we are one of the main developers of high-tech skills for the country. And, and these skills are developed in our sector and they get to be diffused uh, throughout the entire economy. There, there are economic sectors that are surviving now because of people that were trained by the South African defense ecosystem, not, not only the industry on its own, but uh, DOD, Armscore also play a, a huge role in the development 
of these uh, high tech skills. And, and lastly, we, we, we allow the country, we, we, we assist the country uh, in ensuring its strategic independence uh, because we've got the ability to produce in-house. It therefore allows our, our principles, political principles to have that uh, independence of taking decisions without being beholden uh, to other countries and, and without being forced to conform to positions that they would uh, otherwise not necessarily take uh, simply because of, of, of national security. So we, we are a very unique sector and we would always want to reaffirm the, the special character uh, of, of the South African def defense industry. And, and what also brings us a bit of comfort is that the way we view ourselves is not so different from how government also sees the, the, the South African defense industry. The, the defense industry strategy, a document developed by the Department of Defense and, and the Aerospace and Defense Master Plan, a document developed under the leadership of, of the Department of Public Enterprise within the Master Plan framework are two documents that clearly spell out the significance of having a defense industry or in aerospace and, and, and defense industry. We, we are one of the sectors that, that present tremendous opportunities for the country to change its economic posture and its economic landscape. We, we are considered as a apex ecosystem. And, and this is a very important phrase to always emphasize. Apex ecosystem, because the technology and the skills and the products that is developed in our sector allows other sectors uh, to achieve their maximum potential. What gets to be developed in the defense, aerospace and defense sector is now being applied across multiple sectors within the South African economic landscape and, and also the, the, the African economic landscape. So for our country to fully realize its ambitions with regards to the fourth industrial and even the fifth industrial revolution, we need to ensure that we protect this asset called a South African aerospace and, and, and defense uh, industry. So Chair, with, with regards to the issues that we were asked uh, to, to, look, to look at, we, we, we broken down uh, the challenges into, into two parts. Uh, firstly, we are going to take you through uh, challenges that pertain to the regulation, the regulatory environment, and, and then we'll take you through the, the, the general challenges that we, we, we are confronting both within the local environment and, and the external uh, environment. We, we are a sector that is heavily reliant uh, on export. We, we generate our revenue currently, 85% uh, of that revenue is, is generated uh, through exports uh, and only a remaining 15% 15 is generated uh, through local, local means. And, and the main reason for that is of course well known, uh, the declining defense budget has resulted in not uh, many opportunities available for our industry to do business locally. There, there are companies that do not do any business in South Africa that are 100% export dependent. In this frame of mind, you then realize that uh, our regulator becomes an enabler more than anything else. It therefore goes without saying, Chair, that the timeliest processing of permit applications is sometimes, and this is no exaggeration, a, a, an existential issue uh, for, for some uh, of, of our companies. The delay in processing applications, the unreliability of the system makes it difficult for our companies to effectively compete in, in global markets. We have in the past had uh, delays that have resulted in us as a country and as a industry suffering damages as far as our reputation and international standing is concerned. We, we then still have a, a responsibility, and this is a request we, we are putting across, that we would need to have a program of re-engaging with the countries that were affected by those delays. The majority of those countries were in the Middle East. They are well known, the countries that we refer to. And there are now some in Africa where uh, application uh, permits uh, are, being, are being delayed in, in terms of issuance. So the time years processing of, of permits is an issue that is very critical for us as, as, as the defense industry. There, there is also administrative and, and operational challenges 
uh, within the DCAC environment as the secretariat, as the, as the, as the entity that is charged with processing our applications for, for decision-making uh, within the NCACC and in reverse, uh, issuing those permits once decisions uh, have been made. And, and those challenges, uh, there are many and, and they've been listed in, in the supporting documentation in great detail, uh, are negatively affecting the, the functioning of, of the industry. We, we are therefore putting it uh, to the Joint Standing Committee that maybe it's time we, we seriously consider relocating the, the, the Secretariat away from its current uh, position, uh, geographic position, and, and allocating sufficient resources for, for its operation. And the reason we are putting this up for consideration is we, we then have noted that some of the challenges uh, the DCAC faces are challenges not of its own making, are challenges that are related to where it is located. So we, we may want to, to consider relocating, considering the, the, the critical nature that the, the, the Secretariat plays in, in the functioning of the industry. When, when we last briefed the, the Joint Standing Committee, we, we were very excited at, at the prospects of a review process for the NCAC Act and other relevant policies that, that regulate uh, our sector. That exercise has delayed. We, we, we are 12 months, uh, in fact, we are 18 months behind schedule with, with that exercise. We, we would then request that we, we expedite the process of reviewing the, 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 the current act. It was last reviewed in, in 2012. We are of the view that the act as it currently stands does not take into account the fact that we are now a highly export uh, reliant uh, defense uh, industry. It, it does not take into account national interest as it is currently defined uh, in South Africa. As a result, the act, and, and this is not necessarily the, those that apply the act, but the act as it currently stands, it is not pro-economic development, not pro-growth, and, and it is not aligned with, with our national uh, priorities. So the, the, the current posture of the act uh, emphasizes regulation as opposed to enablement. For a South African defense company to do business, it relies on the NCACC and the DCAC for everything that it needs to do. And, and this is starting from its ability to operate. It needs to be registered with the DCAC. When it wants to go and forage, for opportunities, it needs to put in an application for a marketing permit. Once it has done its marketing and it is now ready to transact, it needs to put in an application for a contracting permit. Once it has done and it is manufactured, what it had contracted, it was contracted to do, it needs to put in an application for a export permit. This entire process could take up to a year because on average, it takes about nine, sometimes 18 weeks, if one is lucky, for the permits to be, to be processed. And so, so we need to have a, a posture that says we are now enabling the industry without relaxing the provisions of the regulation that government needs to, to and oversight that government needs to provide uh, over the industry. Uh, lastly, and this is quite critical uh, for, for us, it's, it's the impact on the functioning of the NCACC uh, with regards to changes at cabinet level. The NCACC is constituted of, of ministers that are appointed uh, by the president. So whenever there are changes at cabinet level, it sometimes results in, 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 in delays in filling positions that are created by those changes. It then has impact on the corrading of the mini of the meetings uh, for the minister. There is also disruptions that are caused by 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 elections, be they at party level or, or at, 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 at government level. Uh, when there are elections, of course, we, we, we understand and we fully understand this. Uh, the people that make up this structure called NCACC also have other obligations that are competing for their time. And more often than not, the work of the NCACC tends to be relegated uh, down to the bottom of the list. Uh, and, and we feel that if we were to uh, review the act, amend the act, there are solutions that can address 
some of these challenges and, and we are not downplaying the, the, the sincerity with which the, the members of the NCACC take on the responsibility assigned by the president, but we are just stating that the act as it currently stands does not allow for flexibility uh, in as far as managing some of the challenges uh, that, that, that we come across. And, and Chair, this is just a graphic description uh, of what I've, I've alluded to and the impact in either the delays uh, in, in decision making or the, the, if there is a no decision in as far as a, 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 an application uh, is concerned, it does impact jobs severely uh, and, and it does impact our, our standing in, internationally. Those that are familiar with the environment of defense uh, will know that once a company is exited from a certain market, uh, chances of that company regaining its position in that market are relatively zero. So there are areas where South Africa is well regarded. Uh, and if we were to lose those markets, we will never regain those markets. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's an issue that, that, that needs to be taken uh, seriously. There, there is also then an impact on, 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 on the value chain, on the entire value chain that our companies are involved in. If there is delay, and we, we know at, at the height of the delays around 2020, 2021, there was a number of SMMEs that had to shut shop uh, simply because the products had not been exported and they had not been paid for the work that, that, that they had done. And, and once company then start losing revenue that gets generated by exports, there is no investments in future technologies. It would then mean we, we are in industry that is dying rather than an industry that is keeping up with, with technological development. And of course, as, as the minister has stated, once that starts happening, the biggest impact would also then be felt uh, within the SANDF environment because they would, not, they would no longer have access to the best technology, to the best uh, equipment locally. They would need to go out of South Africa to procure uh, their equipment. And, and as I'm saying, the national security would be affected uh, in turn. So, so Chair, this, this, this is a, a quite a, 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 an important a graphic description of, of the challenge that we face on an ongoing basis uh, with regards to exports. Uh, and we would hope that ultimately we, we may be able to find a lasting solution uh, to this challenge. So other challenges, Chair, that we, we, are, we, are, we are facing that are not necessarily uh, related to the functioning of the, the NCACC and, and, and the DCAC, uh, well, the declining budget is, 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 is a challenge that affects us all, uh, more so the, the South African National Defense Force. Uh, our budget has been declining. They, there is no special defense account to speak of as, as, we, as we sit uh, currently. Chair, there is, also, there is also a delay in the implementation of, of the aerospace and, and defense uh, master plan. Uh, honorable members would recall that around October 2020, we adopted as a sector an aerospace and defense master plan. And in, in meetings that we had, or in briefings that we had with the Joint Standing Committee, after that, we, we, we spoke so highly about the plan and what it promised. Uh, but I'm, 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 I'm afraid to report that uh, since then until now, there has not been any movement uh, in the implementation uh, of the plan. Uh, a very good plan, well-crafted, well thought out, well mapping the future of what needs to happen within the aerospace and defense industry. And, and once again, it then uh, falls into this challenge that we have uh, as a country in, in terms of ability of implementing the plans and the policies that, that we develop. So there's not been any implementation of the aerospace uh, and defense uh, master plan. And, and what we then see also is, is follow through on, on, on MOD budget vote uh, pronouncements. Whenever there are budget votes delivered by the Minister of Defense, we follow those very closely. And this dates back to, to the time of, of, of the former minister, uh, the, the current speaker of the National Assembly. Uh, in those budget votes, there, there would be pronouncements that are made uh, by the Honorable Minister, and, and we would then be waiting in, in, in anticipation for those pronouncements uh, to be followed through. Uh, it never happens. We, we were very excited this year when the Honorable Minister delivered her budget vote because she touched 
on some of the issues where we feel as the industry, we've got a role to play. Uh, and, and she charged those that report under her to work with industry in attending to some of the issues that they had identified. We, we are now in, in, in November, soon it will be December. Uh, we come back in January, it's a new cycle of, of budget votes and, and budget speeches. Uh, there's been very little action in, 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 in following through on, on these pronouncements uh, by the minister. And, and we hope that the portfolio committee and the joint, or the joint standing committee uh, could hold those that are charged with implementing uh, accountable uh, so, that, so that there could then be reasons as to why uh, these uh, pronouncements are not being followed through. Chair, there is not enough engagement between our industry and, and the security cluster. Uh, immediately after the, the, the July 2021 riots in, in Gauteng and, 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 and KwaZulu Natal, we, we wrote a number of letters uh, to government departments that are charged with protecting uh, South Africa. And the reason we were doing that is because when, when the president addressed the nation, uh, immediately after those riots, one of the things the president said was our, our security cluster was caught unaware, uh, unprepared and ill-equipped. We then felt, but surely on the issue of equipment, we, we know for a fact that we have what is required to properly equip uh, the various departments, be it the intelligence services or the police and, and even the SANDF itself. So we, we wrote letters. Uh, to say to them, can we engage uh, on this issue? We are not saying you will be forced to buy from us, but at least we want to make you aware of what is available in the country so that next time the president doesn't say these things do not exist because uh, we do have some of them. Uh, we did not get any feedback. There was no traction in, in that regard. And, and it is quite saddening on our part because we, we know that we, we can help, we can lend a hand, we can assist in at least ensuring that our security agencies uh, are properly equipped uh, at, at the very least. The, the minister has touched on the industry, uh, this has been delayed. We, we are happy to know that it has not completely fallen off the radar uh, because we were quite excited when, when it was planned and, and we were very much looking forward uh, to it. It was an event that was going to give us an, an opportunity to, to, to at least share the same room with our Commander-in-Chief and, and maybe bring some of these challenges to his attention as the Commander-in-Chief. But, but it, was, it, was, it was postponed for, for, for reasons that were at that time uh, beyond the control of the organizers. And, and we are happy now to hear that it is still on the radar. Uh, and from our side, we, we recommit to working with the department and, and, and the organizers in ensuring that the industry does take place and ensuring that we participate fully as, as the South African defense industry. The, the, the defense industrial policy is, is, is a policy that is, is a very strategic tool for, for our sector. But if it is to be implemented in a manner that does not allow for flexibility, it tends to defeat uh, its purpose. So, so there is a very in, inflexible application of, of the deep uh, policy. And, and we are hoping that we can get to a stage where without necessarily compromising the provisions of the policy, we can find ways in which we implement it in a manner that allows all parties uh, to, 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 to be happy with, with the outcome. Research and development is what allowed our industry to be at the stage where it is in. Research and development is what allowed our industry to be known the world of. But if we do not coordinate the spending on research and development, we once again run the risk of being obsolete, run the risk of having equipment that nobody wants to use because it is not keeping up with the current times. And unfortunately, the coordination of research and development can only be done at a central level, at a government level. So, so we, we, we request that the issue of research and development be taken quite seriously because it is what will allow us 20 years into the future to continue having the capabilities that we have as a country. 
lastly, inadequate uh, resourcing of, of government structures that support industry. We, we've got some of the very best structures that if they were to be supported fully, uh, some of the challenges that we have would not exist. Uh, the National Defense Industrial Council is, is one such structure established in, in 2016 by, by the previous minister. Uh, there is not enough resources uh, within that structure. The, the Secretary for Defense has kept it going and we take our head off uh, to, to her and, and Dr. Kanyile as part of the secretariat, but we can do more to, to support uh, that structure. The, the Defense uh, Sector Charter Council is one such uh, structure as well. Established about two years ago, currently there is no budget uh, for, for that structure. Uh, so it does exist, it does operate, uh, but it's living on borrowed time if we do not necessarily capacitate from a budgetary uh, perspective. And, and the same could be said for the DCAC. So everyone, when they come, they brief the Joint Standing Committee uh, on these structures. And we, we ask that at their next briefing, you, you interrogate the issue of support that gets given uh, to, to these uh, structures. Because they exist, they exist because there was a need for them to exist. But if we do not capacitate them, then we are dooming them to fail when, when they are in, 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 in effect uh, quite good uh, structures. Challenges that we, we are facing on, on the external front, there they, they is of course no coordination uh, with regards to export support. And, and we don't say this lightly, we, we do understand the, the, the makeup of the South African uh, government system. We, we know that we've got a very close relationship with the Department uh, of Defense, but we are also aware that the political uh, outlook uh, of the country gets to be taken care of by the, the, the Department of International Relations and, co and, 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 and Cooperation. And as companies, we get to be supported by the Department of Trade and Industry. If you are a Denel, you then add a shareholder, which is the Department of Public Enterprise. If these departments do not come together and come up with a coherent uh, industry export support strategy, it, it becomes very difficult uh, for our industry to, to compete. We, we are competing. Uh, but not at the level at which we should be competing. And we are starting to lose ground uh, to some of our main competitors, particularly on, on, on the African continent where opportunities should always be going towards our direction. The, the, the president is, is the highest political office that we have uh, in the country. Uh, and, and of course we understand the challenges uh, that we would always have with regards to the president's time and, and focus. Uh, but what we have seen is that our competition out there uh, deploy their precedents whenever they are pursuing uh, opportunities uh, in, in, in various uh, countries. In fact, they did it uh, to South Africa when we were in the market uh, during the special uh, acquisition uh, defense uh, package. We were visited by, by the Chancellor of Germany here, and, and I would venture that it, it's, it's then no coincidence that we ended up uh, buying frigates uh, from Germany uh, and, and, and submarines uh, from Germany. We, we were visited by uh, the president of France when we were on the market for a strategic airlift capability. Uh, it is no coincidence that we ended up buying the Airbus A400, even if we later had to cancel uh, that the transaction. Uh, the techs are, are deploying their president uh, all over Africa where there are opportunities. As a result, South African companies are now playing second fiddle uh, to Turkish companies in, in, in Africa. Uh, even though we may have the best equipment, we may be much cheaper in price compared to our, our, our competitors, but because they are able to deploy their highest political office, uh, we, we, we then tend to lose out uh, on them. And, and colleagues who were, who were at, at AAD in September would have seen that within the Turkish pavilion, they, they had the office of the president uh, there so that they could follow up on any opportunity that Turkish companies bring over. We, we, we are then asking for something similar uh, to that. We know we may not have it entirely in that way, but it does help and it does work 
if the political support is going to be coming from the highest political office uh, in our land. We had already managed, mentioned the fact of a damaged reputation uh, due to the inefficiencies uh, that we have on a regulatory front. It has damaged our reputation. There are countries that are now considering taking their business uh, away from us. Uh, so it means we really need uh, to re-engage with those countries so that at least, at the very least, they remain committed to, 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 to South Africa. Uh, and and in, in as far as support for, for export uh, opportunities, the, the, there is not enough support that, that, that is provided. And, and here we are talking about support that is different from the one that we are asking for from the president. We know the president or the presidency will not, will not always be available uh, to support us in a manner that requires uh, our industry to be supported. And, and the reason we are, we are crying for this support stems from the fact that we are regulated and, and we are a function of, of diplomacy and, and politics more than anything else. So, so for countries to trust you, they need to know that your government supports you, your government is, is, is fully behind you. And, and the reason we are also asking for the support, it's because of the declining budget locally. There is no special defense account to speak of. If there is no defense account to speak of, it means our SMMEs that rely on the big companies getting work uh, will, will then suffer. Because if our big companies do not get work, the entire value chain gets to be, gets to be affected. And once our SMMEs are affected, transformation gets to be affected as well, because the bulk of the SMMEs that we have, the majority are, are black, black owned companies, uh, women owned companies, uh, historically disadvantaged owned companies. And, and if these then suffer, it means 10 years from now, we will still be saying our industry is, is, is not transformed without necessarily looking at the reasons uh, as to why th th that, is, that is the case. But, but in, 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 enough about, about challenges. Uh, let's now turn our attention to opportunities because there are opportunities. Uh, and we start on the local front in as far as opportunities are, are concerned. We, we remain a South African defense industry and our primary client will always be the South African National Defense Force. It, it does not give us any joy when we see our primary client having the challenges as far as equipment is concerned that, that the SANDF has. And we know that in most cases, we do have solutions that, that can be offered to them. So, so there's, there's an opportunity there. There are challenges and in those challenges, lies an opportunity and, and, and first of which is, is our ability to assist in maintaining the current equipment that they have uh, so that we improve and, and increase its serviceability and availability for use by either deployed forces in the DRC, Mozambique and, and even those that are deployed locally and, and also for training purposes in, 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 in Lohatla. Uh, but with that, we also want to ensure that we, 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 we work with our primary client in, in providing long-term solutions to key and critical capabilities. And, and we've listed just three examples uh, of capabilities that, that we can assist in. We know they are more. Uh, there is a mobility uh, challenge that, that, that our SANDF has. We, we are aware of this. And during the riots in, in 2021, it, it, it became very visible. Uh, the ability for the SANDF, I think, to react and deploy quickly was severely hampered uh, by the lack of a, a, a more, an armored mobility uh, solution. Uh, but we are also aware that even on the logistics front, the, 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 there are challenges. The, there was an attempt uh, to develop the Africa track, uh, but we don't think it, it, it succeeded. So there are challenges that we can work with in, uh, with in, in resolving. Uh, on the maritime side, we, we know that the, there is a requirement for uh, IPv4. Uh, for the fourth uh, inshore patrol vessel. But, but we are also aware that the, 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 the frigates and the submarines are due for their midlife upgrades. And we, we can work uh, with, with the Navy and, and Arms Corps and, and, and the Secretariat in, in, in providing solutions in that regard. And the airlift capability. Our C-130s, the majority of them are not serviceable. Uh, so we do not have a, a, a very robust airlift capability. We know this and, and, and we would want to engage 
in, in how we can remedy this situation. And as I say, these are just examples, uh, Chair, that we've listed. There are other areas that we are willing uh, to engage in, in as far as opportunities are concerned. Uh, but one, one of the other great opportunities is, is on the implementation of the defense review. Uh, there was a very thorough exercise that was conducted in, in developing the defense review. And, and the area of special interest for us is on the sovereign and strategic capability as defined by, by the defense uh, review. We, we have companies that fall squarely within this uh, bracket of sovereign and strategic capability. And if we accept that those capabilities are sovereign and they're strategic, it therefore follows that we will do all in our power to ensure that those companies are supported because if they are to lose uh, those capabilities, the country loses those capabilities. So we would also then want to engage on the implementation of the defense review. Uh, having said that, Chair, we are aware, we are not oblivious to the fact that uh, funding is an issue. And the expectation of National Treasury to fund fully all the requirements related to security is, yeah, it's not an expectation that one can hold their breath on because National Treasury has so many requirements that they need to contend with, so many priorities that our government has to, has to, has to contend with. So we, we are then introducing a, a, a discussion chair that says maybe it is time that we started uh, considering public-private partnerships uh, for defense projects. It is not an unfamiliar uh, thing in terms of public-private pro uh, partnership projects in South Africa. We, we know within the road infrastructure network and projects that they, they, they do triple piece. Uh, the toll concessions are an example uh, of that. But we are also aware in the automotive sector, there is a, a, a partnership between the public and the private sector that allows companies like Ford to, to invest in their, in their, in their Wadlu plant in, in, in Pretoria East and, and then SARS give them uh, tax breaks uh, of one way or the, or the other. So, so there are various options that could be explored within the defense and security environment. And, and there are countries that are doing it. Uh, we know that the Americans are, are doing it. The Indians have just started doing it. Uh, the British, the Australian, and, and the Israelis. And, and all of these are countries that have some of the best uh, technologies and, and products in the world. And it's precisely because they, they enter into partnerships with, with the private sector. They, they accept that as government, they do not have all the money in the world to undertake the, the, the research that is required to, to undertake the development and the, and the manufacturing of the products that, that, that is required. So we, 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 are, we are then pleading with the Joint Standing Committee to maybe develop a program where they, they, they could undertake benchmarking exercise in this regard, learn from these countries uh, into how they augment their very limited uh, defense uh, budget so that we could also then start having another option uh, within the South African uh, environment. The, the magnitude of the required funding uh, to, to look after defense is, is quite huge. And, and government has many competing priorities. So, so if we are to seriously address the, the challenges within the defense ecosystem, we would need to think uh, outside the box. Chair, with, with regards to opportunities uh, on the foreign uh, front, uh, the Middle East uh, continues uh, to uh, hunger for, for, for South African produced products. Uh, and there is money in the Middle East. So whenever companies venture into the Middle East, chances of them getting that business and being paid for it are, are, are quite high. Uh, Europe currently presents numerous opportunities uh, for, for our, our country. And, and, and when we talk about Europe, we, we had not uh, considered Europe as a market uh, that is worth paying attention to in the past for, for obvious reasons. It, it's a closed market where NATO countries only do business uh, with each other. But with the conflict in, in Russia and Ukraine, what we are then seeing, uh, besides the two protagonists that are involved, all other countries in Europe are now starting to rearm and re-equip uh, them, themselves. They, they have realized that relying on the Americans for, for protection 
is not a good strategy. So there is quite a lot of resources from a budgetary perspective uh, in Europe and European companies are not coping with, with, with the demand. Uh, as a result, small industries such as ours could then benefit from the excess requirements that, 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 that the European countries are, are on the market for. And, and, and unfortunately, this is a, a, a opportunity that has a lifespan. It's not an opportunity that is going to exist for long. So we need to, to really move with speed in, in taking advantage of the opportunity that the European environment currently presents for us. India has long been interested in, in, in South African produced products. We, we, we have been engaging with the Indians for at least four years now. And, and they, they've got, I think, the third biggest uh, defense force uh, in the world after the Americans uh, and, and the Chinese. Uh, they are quite huge and, and they do have buying power, which is the most important thing. And they do want South African technology. Uh, about four years ago, they did try to implement a make in India policy, uh, but I think they've ran into some problems in, in as far as that policy is concerned they are now refining it and therein lies an opportunity for South African companies. Uh, lastly, Africa remains our, our key target market uh, due to proximity, of course. We are a defense industry that is located in Africa, but also shifting political uh, alliances within the African uh, environment. There, there is quite a number of dynamics that are now making it quite possible for South African companies to venture into African territories and get business, whereas in the past they, they would not have gotten business. There, there is an anti-France sentiment in, in West Africa, and they want to replace uh, France as a preferred supplier with South African produced goods. So we can have a, a mission to West African countries where we, we, we cement these, these, these requirements. And there are countries that were historically reliant uh, on the Russians for, for, for defense and security equipment. The Russians are now their own challenges and they are leaving these markets neglected. It's an opportunity for, for, for South Africa to move in and, and close that gap. So there's quite a number of opportunities and it's these opportunities that make us feel we, we can easily be a, a 15 to 20 billion dollar industry on an annual basis. And, and that's of about 400 billion rands if we really play, play our, our, our cards right. So, so Chair, those are the opportunities that we have identified within our limited resources and limited power as industry. We are actively pursuing these opportunities and, and working and, and, and supporting our, our companies. Of course, we do rely heavily on, on South African missions abroad for, for support in accessing some of these some of these markets. Uh, in terms of our feedback, Chair, with uh, the cooperation between industry and the NCACC, we, we are happy to report that that relationship has, has improved quite uh, tremendously. And, and we thank the, the, the current chair of the NCACC, uh, Minister Gungubele, and, and the, the chair of the scrutiny committee and the head of the secretariat, uh, Ambassador Kujo and Advocate Jele, respectively. The, the relationship has improved uh, and, and we have seen actively the NCACC trying to ensure that they, they, they stick to the mandate that the act has given them. Uh, and the highlight of that chair was in February this year when we had a meeting uh, with the chair of the NCACC and this was the first of its kind. Uh, it, it then shows you how seriously the NCACC uh, has taken the work that it does uh, for the industry. And, and in that meeting, there were two notable takeaways uh, in that we, we agreed to institutionalize the interaction between the two structures, the NCACC and, and the industry, so that it doesn't become an individual thing. When there are changes uh, on either side, then the interaction collapses. We, we, we are working on institutionalizing it. And, and secondly, we then also agreed to improve communication and interaction to show that there is alignment at, at all times. If there is alignment, it then removes any, any fear of misunderstandings uh, and miscommunications. Uh, of course, we have not done as well as we could uh, in this regard. So there are areas where we can both uh, improve in as far as improved communication uh, is, is concerned. 
And, and as I've said, Chair, we, we, we have witnessed and we, we attest to the fact that the NCSC does go an extra mile in ensuring that they are catch up meetings uh, in instances where a monthly meeting does not uh, take place. And, and we see that and, and we applaud that. Uh, however, we, we, we still maintain that the, the, in, the imperative is, is for the committee to meet as, as mandated by the act, which is uh, 10 meetings per year. Uh, even that is, is not enough, but that's what the act says for now. And, and we are hoping that when we get to amend the act, we will change the frequency of those meetings uh, because you can be enabling people uh, who do business uh, only one time a, a month and, and only 10 times per year. It, it's just not competitive. Uh, but currently the act mandates the ministers to meet uh, 10 times a year. Uh, we, would, we would really, really appreciate because it brings predictability uh, to the system. It brings stability to the system. It then allows us as industry to plan a, a, a bit better. Chair, on, on the e-permit uh, application uh, system, we, we, we as industry uh, have not had any training, which is the question that we were meant, uh, asked to, to respond to. Uh, as far as we are concerned, that system is still uh, under development. So it's not yet operational. And there's been no training that, that has taken place, but we, we, we are not be best placed to speak to this uh, because it's an issue that has not yet uh, come to us. It still sits within the DCAC uh, environment. But, but suffice to say, uh, Chair, that we are eagerly awaiting the implementation of this system. Uh, we honestly feel that some of the challenges that we've, we've highlighted, especially in the supporting documentation, would easily be, be, be removed if, if we were operating on a digital uh, platform. They would easily, easily be removed. Uh, the digital platform would, would solve some of the challenges uh, that, 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 that we are facing. Uh, but even that digital platform, of course, must, must then operate under, under correct uh, conditions. So Chair, on, on this issue, we have not received any training. The system, as far as we are concerned, is not yet live. It's still under development. But we would ask that uh, if the committee wants more information on this, they then call on the DCAC to come and, and, and give feedback uh, on this issue. Chair, th that is the end of our submission. Uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for, for the opportunity, Chair. Uh, and if there are any questions, we will gladly uh, attend to them. Uh, Chair, I'm not alone, as I said at the beginning, there are board members uh, here, companies that are affected by some of the challenges that, that we've highlighted. So if an opportunity does arise and you, you indulge us, maybe some of them would also want just to emphasize uh, on the points that, that have been, have been uh, mentioned. Thank you very much, Chair. Aibo. Uh, the chairperson or Mr. Mutley must, must take guidance. Um, Honorable Mutley, are you still in the meeting? It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Okay. Colleagues, uh, I'm, I'm muted for a private meeting. Uh, please, oh, please, go ahead. please go ahead. Chairperson, you must take over, if you can. Uh, Tabo? Oh, I think the system has kicked, me, kicked, kicked him out. Okay, colleagues, thank you very much. Um, maybe let's, let, let me thank the, the, the industry, the association for the, the presentation uh, tonight. And um, it looks as though uh, the matters have not changed from the last time they were uh, before us to do uh, the presentation. Then they were still hoping that, um, uh, you know, uh, the proposed uh, with all the relevant uh, players um, will assist uh, in coming up with a, a national coherent view 
of how some of the matters that were presented today uh, could then be dealt with. And that Lihutla was planned for May uh, 2020, uh, but was postponed uh, to a later date. Um, uh, so it's not happening this year, but the minister said, um, uh, regretted that, that thing, the Lihutla has not happened and promised that um, it would play, take place um you know uh, as soon as uh, you know uh, maybe next year early um hope so we need this uh, uh, to bring to the fore some of the issues uh, that have been placed on the table uh, tonight uh, for discussion and, and resolution uh, the fellows are in business and um, uh, the business is highly competitive and, uh, and that if all systems that support uh, the business activity uh, are not in sync, uh, it risks uh, their reputation, as it has been mentioned uh, uh, earlier. And, uh, and not only that, you know, uh, you, know, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, losing market, uh, as it were. And losing market will affect uh, the growth uh, of the of the industry. Uh, and the point is made that yes, we are fine with regulation, but um, we need um, the environment to be improved to actually enable a business uh, to triumph, because um, their ability to transact uh, depends largely on the on the NCACC. Uh, I think uh, that that is the issue. I'm raising this issue to underscore the the need for 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 the the, the agency with which we must approach this uh, issue of the the uh, And then two, there was an issue that was mentioned previously um, that of um, small caliber weapons and ammunition, and um, uh, you know. Uh, Amsco said they can procure for all uh, departments and agencies within within the security cluster, and uh, but uh, it doesn't look like um, we we are we are, we, are, we are there as yet because um, they still uh, procure these things from uh, overseas uh, countries. But that, but the, the question I have uh, that I will pose to 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 you, um, uh, Bamlovu. You know, when you say you can provide long-term solutions um, to key and critical opportunities, um, maritime IPv4, uh, airlift uh, capability, um, you know, upgrade of our, um, uh, uh, what do you call, um, what do you call this, um, upgrade of our, for this? Transmission equipment. Yes, yes, yes. Um, in, 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 yeah. Oh, the free gates and, and, and the other vessels. You see, you, you, you are basically saying you would appreciate the, uh, the opportunity, basically saying that at the moment, uh, that opportunity is not available to local industries. Are you saying this because we still rely heavily on the uh, OMEs and that if we were to substitute that, that will create more opportunities for the local industries. You did not uh, uh, come clear on that one. Um, Mr. Mare, your hand is up. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Blovo, for the presentation. Fantastic presentation, I must say. And if one read the presentation together with the additional document, which says supporting information, um, one must actually read those two together to get the full picture of the presentation and that it is absolutely valuable. Um, it, in my opinion, Chair, if I can just make uh, one or two observations, is that, um, you know, there's, there's for me, there's, slight, there's a, quite a big difference between what NCACC reported to us, especially in terms of the dual system or electronic system, which clearly doesn't exist in, uh, um, with the industry. And, and, then, and then the whole process of delayed uh, uh, applications and how the members experience that. And that we must take to heart. And I would suggest that we 
need to um, get NCACC to respond to each and every point in the presentation, but also the supporting information, the second document. I just want to ask um, uh, Mr. Ndlow, you have referred to basically red tape. It, it, it takes a long time uh, in the supporting document. It refers to that you that that NCACC don't report back. Uh, you know you have to you have to wait until somebody is responding and making inquiries. It's all by hand. Um, so clearly, there's a hell of a lot of red tape that we need to address to make it easier for for the defence industry to to trade uh, internationally and to process applications and basically to comply. Otherwise, as you said, you know, you're losing our business. And I know that some of the industry stakeholders or players or, or companies have told me about businesses that they have lost purely because of the time that is taking and, and it's not predictable. Any of these processes must be predictable. Then you can commit yourself as a company or the industry to deadlines and to amounts and, and then, and then there, there's no problems. I want to ask yourself, um, I get the impression that some of the, of the high value delays uh, with NCACC is basically a in category A and B uh, uh, munition products. So in others, those are the more lethal one, the bombs, the, the mortars, the missiles, things like that. Um, uh, and, and the others are, are easier or quicker to process. Is that the case? And if that is the case, how can one best address this? Because when you go to A and B, that's clearly your high value. And your high value is what, what, what actually is the benchmark for any industry. Um, you know, is that the case? And, and, and how do you see we can process that? Then for me, as the whole industry, uh, all your members, because only about five or eight companies are very big. And then you've got a huge lot of small, medium and micro enterprise businesses. Can you give us an indication of that membership that is dependent on this industry? Uh, because we know that those members have got families. So it, is, it, it might be a huge lot of people that is dependent on this industry. And, and if we can assist the, the industry, the small businesses can, can um, uh, employ more people. You can just address that very quickly. And then, in your, your, as I've said, I mean, if you can indicate to us how the rate that can be made much easier. Um, Chairperson, I've, I've picked up on the presentation that this is a 15 to $20 billion potential uh, industry. Uh, and I think for us in South Africa, that is major. And we have seen at the AAD the enormous potential of the defense industry uh, businesses. So, so in my opinion, um, this is wonderful. This is a vindication of many of us who have been, you know, working very hard to get to a point where we can address this, this, this matters very, very urgently. So if you can just address to that, it'll be wonderful if we can then cooperate, Chairperson, and get more interactions like this to make sure that we play a role that the industry is more competitive and South Africa can grow economically and jobs can be created. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Shalembe and Mr. Raider, uh, in that order, please. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, um, for an opportunity and also, I mean, uh, uh, also thanks uh, to the presentation uh, that is, I mean, very, very comprehensive. Uh, Chairperson, what we are hearing today is telling us that, I mean, uh, we are not, I mean, uh, improving, especially when it comes to uh, the security cluster. Uh, I think, I mean, SNTF, we all agree that it's part, I mean, is part and is playing a big role when it comes to the security, I mean, uh, of the country. As I mean, we know that I mean uh, that their main function is the protection. I mean, of our boundaries, protection of us as citizens, and protection of our economy. But now, looking now to the issue, of, say whether we are combat ready, there is something that is I mean, uh, you know, uh, disturbing on my side. 
Chair, if, I mean, um, there's something wrong, I mean, with the head of the train, surely, I mean, uh, the trucks behind, I don't think, I mean, uh, there's anything that we can, uh, can be protected. I'm saying this, uh, Chairperson, because of the comment in the presentation that um, if, I mean, uh, one looks, I mean, uh, to, I mean, the issue of, I mean, engagement uh, or, I mean, uh, the support from, I mean, uh, the leadership, especially uh, that is being referred, I mean, to the president, I mean, who, I mean, uh, who is uh, sitting in a highest uh, political office uh, in the country. I say, I mean, uh, the support, I mean, look, I mean, uh, he is uh, the person that now we need to know, I mean, uh, what uh, system do they use to communicate, I mean, uh, with the president? Whether they are sort of, I mean, uh, formal uh, writings or letters that were sent to the president. And despite, I mean, uh, that attempt by, I mean, the defense, the president has not, I mean, uh, given the... Port. The uh, chairperson, another one, uh, I think, I mean, uh, he also I mean, uh, mentioned the issue, I mean, I'll say, I mean, when it comes to the mobility, um, I remember during, I mean, uh, the riot, I mean, uh, in July, where, I mean, a number of, I mean, uh, uh, SNDF vehicles had a lot of breakdowns on the road. Some, I mean, uh, were leakings, you know, where, as they were coming, people were saying, oh, how can you, I mean, uh, a citizen rely on these vehicles? So that is telling us, I mean, that, I mean, uh, there is no proper attention, I mean, to ensure that, I mean, uh, we are, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, combat ready as a country. Also, Chairperson, that there are numerous, I mean, is saying there are numerous, I mean, attempts by the defense, I mean, uh, to get support from, I mean, uh, the security cluster or, I mean, to get, I mean, enough time to engage on issues between the two. But, I mean, he has mentioned that, I mean, uh, such, I mean, a number of attempts have not, I mean, uh, I mean uh, been uh, successful. I also want to know, I mean, uh, as they are saying now, despite, I mean, uh, numerous attempts by the defense industry, so now they are not getting, I mean, I mean engagement uh, or support from the security cluster. Is it possible maybe to uh, highlight or, I mean, uh, I mean, put a picture what format they are using. If, I mean, they say numerous attempts, it means now it may happen that there are a number of uh, letters or requests uh, for to have such engagement uh, with a security cluster. I don't know, I mean, uh, what is, I mean, their line of communication and then who's responsible, I mean, uh, for not, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, responding to the call uh, by the defense, I mean, industry. Chairperson, I mean, uh, we cannot afford, I mean, uh, to allow a situation. Uh, I mean, we have learned a lesson, I mean, in the July, I mean, riot. We learned a lesson. It was an eye opening. So now we can't at this time to say now, we are still, I mean, not taking this serious. Imagine that July riot, if it was, it was taking place throughout the, por the provinces, what was going to happen? So Chair, maybe if I can get a clear picture, why, I mean, we have such, I mean, uh, ignorance in those uh, people who are supposed to be engaging with uh, the defense industry. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Reda. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Wow, sorry, my contact lens has just shifted. Uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. And and it's almost a feeling of, of, of you've been, you've confirmed for us tonight what been told uh, in previous presentations and discussions, and certainly what we experienced uh, we were, when we were at the African Aerospace uh, display the other day, in our interactions with some of the industry players that we met there, uh, who were kind enough to share their experiences and their ideas and show us what they've done. And... Um, so I think it's it's the next logical step is good to to come here and formalize it uh, so we can hear what what, what the issues are. And I, I think what the industry is asking for is fairly simple, basic stuff. It's number one, please give us a hearing, talk to us. And and I think that was what many of the players were imploring us when we were at uh, African Aerospace was to say, you know, all we want is a foot in the door and a fair opportunity. So I do think that the rescheduling 
of that Lakhotla is massively important. And I think that it's something, Chair, that we need to monitor uh, and make sure that it happens and make sure that it happens uh, sooner rather than later. So that there can at least be dialogue so that the industry can interact with government um, and, and just let government know exactly what their problems are. And I do think that there's a role for us as parliament to play as, uh, in oversight um, when that meeting does happen. Um, that, that I think is part one. What, what, what is incredibly important to me as well is the fact that there's been a solution offered today. And the comment was made that this is a highly regulated industry. And I think if, <laughs> there's no one that thinks it shouldn't be. It must be highly regulated and, and, and you know, the, the rules are there for a reason. However, it's the way it is regulated, I think, that is giving uh, frustration to the industry and the long delays that they're experiencing. Um, specifically, and I mean, I think we all know that, that the uh, NCACC is, is made up of some, some people that have incredible demands on their time. Uh, and if they are having to go through this uh, labor-intensive, uh, paper-intensive way of getting the decisions through, I think that can't be constructive. So I do think that the comments about um, reviewing the legislation, uh, certainly reviewing the processes behind the legislation, um, and also kicking off the electronic uh, processing mechanism that has been alluded to that none of us have actually seen or, or, or heard of. It's like a, uh, yeah, perhaps a mythical creature at this stage. So I think th those are the key elements that I wanted to highlight. And I do think that we need to, to, to hear from the executive uh, what their plans are in terms of reviewing the legislation uh, and the way that it's implemented. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. You know, I getting a sense that uh, am, am I still audible, colleagues? Uh, yes, oh, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you loud, loud and clear. Thank you. I'm getting a sense that we are actually reviewing matters um, should actually be thrashed out at the the Lihutla. It's it's again. I want I want to confirm. What the minister has said uh, that um, uh, it's regret regrettable that uh, this lehotla was was delayed. Um, it, in in my view, is pretty urgent. Uh, otherwise, uh, if, if every time we meet like this, uh, we'll keep getting the same uh, issues. Uh, told that um, told that the matters are not resolved or have not been resolved. And and and, the, and and how they affect the industry and, and so on and so forth. I mean, <clears throat> we 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 are getting the, tonight that they've uh, not started implementing the the I mean the master plan. Uh, it was adopted uh, in 2020, uh, following the adoption of the defense um, industry strategy. So what it says to me that even that strategy hasn't been carried out because you needed the you needed the the plan to give effect to the strategy uh, as as a whole. So we are way behind. We know what ought to be done, but for some reason we are not doing it. Hence we we are you know uh, still where we were. Um, some 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 some. Some some many years some many many years back, and uh, <clears throat> maybe we should actually commit ourselves tonight that um, the sooner we hold this the um, uh, the bed. Uh, maybe we should be discussing what is holding uh, this up now. Uh, I think the minister is is in the meeting to assist with that, and when is it likely to to take place? And uh, because the matters are, are extremely urgent, and um, what we can uh, take away um, from this meeting uh, for a, a further consideration is the 
the the what you call the 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 DCAC the DCAC is um, a responsiveness uh, to matters that have been raised uh, tonight. Uh, we'll meet with the uh, the NCACC and we'll bring these matters up uh, for resolution. Um, there was a suggestion that the, 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 it must, the DCAC must be uh, relocated, the secretariat must be re, um, uh, located. Uh, I don't know what it means exactly. Uh, maybe when you respond, you, uh, you know, elaborate on, on, on that point. And I agree with you, a legislation that was passed in 2012, where now where you, the defense uh, budget was still allowing uh, or permitting. Uh, now with the decline in the budget and the industry uh, looking outward, you know, for, for, for market, um, we, you know, legislation really should actually be reviewed in, in, in my point. Um, it's, uh, so, but all these matters is better be looked at by the industry uh, itself. And uh, I want just to leave it at that for now. I'm sure the minister will comment at some point once we have responded to some of these issues. Uh, my, my, where I expect the minister to respond on is uh, when are we likely to have this um, industry in the Huta so that at least we have a platform uh, for these matters to be, to be dealt with. I'm trying to push, our, to push these matters away from us now to a platform where the industry itself meets, discusses, and uh, resolve on some of the issues. And of course, with with all with the government wide, uh, all the role players uh, present to assist in uh, uh, unlocking some of the issues. Um, with that, um, you you have the platform. You may be assisted by some of the board members who are in the meeting today. Is the chair of the board in the meeting? That, that is correct, uh, Chair. Yes, I am in the meeting. Okay, let me start with the... Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Let me start with you. Um, you say what you wanted, make, give your remarks, uh, and then invite um, uh, the, the COO to take us, the acting COO to take us through. Thank you, sir, and evening, everybody. Um, with the part of the of the amendment of the act i think that is something that we've been really looking forward to um we're happy that dcac is on board together with the chairperson of the ncacc with the amendment it is very difficult for for us to even be looking at um the electric uh, platform or the, the the digital platform when it comes to the export permits applications if the wording of your EUC, for example, um, it is not speaking to our current situation being strongly on the export side of doing business as defense industry. It is to us more like um, we are adults trying to still swim on a kiddie's pool because what is what the EUC and the wording of the EUC looks like at the moment does not speak to our current um, situation. But otherwise, the rest of the fact that we will have these issues to be discussed in the Lhota with the, our leaders is, is very encouraging for us and the board and the companies that are highly affected because this is something that we really need to attend to so that we can be able to trade. Thank you, sir. CEO. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, Honorable Chair, and, 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 th and thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chair, th thank you for, for, for the honorable members and, and their questions, and I'm, I'm going to try to, to respond as best as I can. Uh, and Chair, you've already granted permission for any of the other board members present uh, just to step in if there are areas where I, I fall short. Uh, Sir, so with, with regards to the uh, question around uh, long-term solutions uh, and, and what we are calling for there, we, we are quite aware, Chair, that the, the delay in the implementation of those projects may have been uh, as a result of budgetary constraints. 
so, so that's the first part. That's why in the very same slide, we, we are also proposing an alternative approach uh, to the funding challenge that the SANDF or the DOD in its entirety have, uh, because we, we are quite aware that there they, they, they are those budget constraints. So, so that's the first element, Chair. And, and the second one is, is then to, to start saying, if we have a defense industry as a country, it would serve us best now and in the future, if we were to find a way that ensures participation of local players in the main. We, we, we accept that there are PFMA uh, principles that have to be complied with in as far as fair and, and, and transparent uh, processes. But, but we, we also say, Chair, we can't be implementing those at the expense of an industry that is as crucial as we all agree uh, our industry is. So, so it's not necessarily that there is fear of the OEMs. Yes, they play a role uh, because if they are the owners of the, the, the originators of this equipment, th there will always be a role for them to play. But we can ensure that whenever an OEM participates, they are South African entities that are in tandem with, with, with that OEM. So, so Chair, it's, it's a function of those two issues. Uh, in the main uh, with regards to long-term solutions. So it would, it would apply to the frigates uh, and, and, and other equipment, uh, that, that prime equipment that, that, that we have that is not uh, locally uh, manufactured uh, here in South Africa. Chair, with regards to the comment on, on DCAC, uh, DCAC relocation, uh, I, I'll, I'll just give an example that we've come to, to, to hear or, of late. Currently, Chair, the, the, the DCAC is located within the DHQ, which is an arms corp building. Uh, and, and there are many challenges with regards to that building. Uh, anything from the ventilation system or the air conditioning system not working to the lifts not working uh, to the power not being, being available. So, so there is quite a lot of disruptions that are placed upon DCAC that are not of their own making. But DCAC is different from an ordinary arms court division. DCAC is an enabler to industry. DCAC needs to be accessible uh, on a continuous basis during working hours. But if all of these things are not functioning, uh, then DCAC employees are not expected to be at their post because it is not a conducive working environment. They thus do not become available. And, and they are not responsible for fixing the problem that is wrong because it is not their building. And, and when we then go look for them, they are not there because the building has the challenges that the building has, but they play a very significant role because they are an enabler. While other people can work from home because the, the situation allows, they've got laptops, the DCAC guys have to be in their post. So, so we were saying that because we also understand that some of the challenges are not of their own making, but they are simply because they are located where they are. Maybe if they were to have control over the environment, they would then structure it in such a way that it is accessible and user-friendly and allows for a very good interactive experience with, with industry. And, and that starts from the time you enter the gate. Uh, arms Co was not structured for, for, for interacting in the way that DCAC is meant to interact with industry. So there are controls in AMSCO that DCAC may decide to relax uh, so that they are easily accessible. They, 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 they then have that rapport uh, with industry. And we, and we are thinking Chair, it, it could be resolved if they were to be then uh, allocated their own space where industry could easily uh, interact with DCAC without necessarily being affected by programs that AMSCO or the DOD may, may be wanting to run uh, in, the, in that building. So, so those were the two questions from, from your side, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Mare, thank, thank you for the, for, for the questions that, that, that you've asked and the, and the comments. And yes, uh, sir, it is correct. There, there is quite a lot of red tape, uh, but the red tape, as, 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 as we've stated, we think it comes as a result 
of the act being drafted in the way that is, it is currently drafted. Uh, because when you engage with the practitioners, with the implementers uh, of the policy, they, they, they are very quick to point out that their actions are within policy. And, and in most often they would be correct uh, because they, they would be quoting the policy for you. So it, it's the policy that, that creates the red tape. There, there may have been a reason for it, when, when the act was first uh, drafted and, and came into effect, we were not an industry that was exporting. And at that time there was issues maybe around the mercenaries and, and the role that the South African former soldiers were playing in, in conflicts in Africa. So government needed to have very tight control over this industry. It was an industry that they were not familiar with and the players were not. So, so we understand that at that time they may have been a reason, but times have shifted. There are new players in the game and the scenario has changed as, as, as it has been alluded to. We are now an export driven industry and the act needs to come to alive uh, to that fact. And, and yes, most of the delays are around category A and category B uh, products to the countries that are affected. And, and the solution we, we feel, and, and this will also then address the question of how to, do we solve that problem? And, and when the opportunity comes, we, we will appear before whoever will be handling the process of, of the amendment. And, and we will then make a submission that, that says in, in effect, that there are ways of regulating the industry without necessarily uh, applying a process that is not effective or efficient. And one of those ways is, is of course, the, the, the application of the regulation needs to be informed by South Africa's political standing and posture at any given time. So, so there are countries that we know as South Africa that we are on friendly terms with. So whenever an application for that country comes through, is it really necessary for it to wait for ministers uh, who are very busy to sit and consider and approve that application, particularly when it has gone through the scrutiny committee? It shouldn't be necessary uh, to, to wait for that. And, and there are countries that we know uh, we will never do business with for political reasons. Uh, the, we, we can make that known in advance so that we don't clog the system with these applications that we know we are never going to uh, process them in a, in a positive manner. Uh, the, 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 there is equipment that we know does not cause problems. Uh, is it really necessary to subject the same application of a, a, a permit to the equipment that is offensive or, or on the sharp end uh, of, 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 of a product. So, so Chair, there are various ways in which we can, we can uh, ensure that the system becomes very efficient. Uh, it is not always necessary from where we are sitting and, 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 the, and, and the research that we've done around the world for the ministers to be the ones that sit and approve uh, on all bases. So you could have a category that says a moment an application pertains to this type of product or pertains to this country, then it needs to go up all the way to ministers so that ministers can apply their minds and, and, and approve it. But if it doesn't feature this, if it doesn't feature that, don't delay it, uh, issue it immediately because that's what will happen in three months uh, when the ministers get, get, get to approve it. So, so there are various ways and we will present all those uh, options uh, to the committee that will be, be busy with, with, with the amendment process. Because we, we know that our competitors can get a, a permit in six days, when a South African company, if they are lucky, will get it in eight weeks. Uh, in six days, and uh, our competitors could get a permit. Uh, we don't, we, we wait and, and imagine if that is a contracting permit you are looking for. A client is ready waiting to sign with you on the dotted line, but you are waiting for someone to authorize. And, and the equipment in question is not offensive in nature. The country in question is not a problematic country politically to South Africa, but we are still subjected to the same process as a guy who's going to be applying to take a bazooka to Iraq or to Iran, as an example. So there are ways, Chair, that we could we could we could lessen the red tape without necessarily affecting 
the, 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 the stringency or, or of the regulation because it, it requires it requires to be there. Uh, Honorable Maria, with, with regards to the value chain, it's it's a, it's a very good question. Sir. When when there are delays, I'm I'm going to give you just two examples. A, a company like Grain Metal uh, RDM has has a value chain of uh, 1,500 companies that are affected when 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 their issues uh, get to stagnate for whatever reason. 1,500 companies in that value chain uh, get get affected. When, when Dinell started experiencing the, the challenges that they were experiencing, uh, over 600 companies were, were affected. Uh, so in, just in those two uh, companies, you, you are talking about over 2,100 companies uh, that were affected just by two big or A-class category companies uh, that we have. So, so the impact gets to be huge. It gets to be quite enormous. Uh, when three or five of our companies are affected, because the impact on the value chain is, is quite is quite substantial, so so there is that link between our companies and the entire value chain, and and the entire value chain cuts across sectors, because not all of our components come from within the defense sector. There, there is an interaction between our sector and other economic sectors, so the impact is quite is quite severe and it's quite spread out. Uh, within within the South African uh, economic uh, system, uh, Babu Shelembe, th thank you very much, sir, for for, for the questions. The, the engagements with with the presidency, we 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 accept that we are not going to have uh, direct access uh, to the head of state. It is a fact, uh, but we did try and reach out to special advisors responsible for national security. Uh, because those are the individuals that are that are charged with advising the president on matters of national uh, security. In 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 the in the past, we had even uh, submitted a, a a motivation uh, to Dr. Nawen. I know he's now with the National School of Government. Uh, in in the past, there was a a position within the presidency that was occupied by a uniform uh, member. And this person was then responsible to advise the president on all matters related to the military in particular as the commander in chief and all matters related to, to the defense industry. There was such an office in the presidency. So about three years ago, we, we submitted a motivation that said, but could you consider re reopening this position? Uh, because it would then be easy for industry and even the DOD to have uh, the SANDF uh, to have access uh, to the president through this office. Uh, but of course, uh, Dr. Ngaweni moved, I think, before he could take that issue uh, forward. So, so we do, we did try to reach out uh, to the advisors, uh, wrote to them, uh, in fact, including the economic advisor. Uh, we, we, we wrote quite a number of uh, correspondences uh, because there, there are areas where we would be chasing opportunities and, and they would say, you know what, a phone call from your president will, will seal the deal for you. And, and we would say, okay, how do we get it? How do we get this? Just the president to call those guys and here's the information, here's the opportunity. These are the figures involved. This is the country involved. There are now two companies competing. One of them is South African. Uh, the guys that side are saying, you know, if our president could call their president, uh, I'm sure they would convince them to then go with South Africa. So we need a platform such as that one. We need an avenue that would allow us, even if it then goes through the DOT, so that the DOT can vet uh, that we don't clog the system with, with, with issues that are going to be later problematic. As long as there is a process, there is an avenue that can be, can be exploited. With, with regards to the security cluster, immediately after the president uh, delivered his address to the nation uh, around July 2021, we, we wrote a number of letters. Uh, state security, uh, police, uh, we wrote a number of letters uh, uh, to the colleagues in the security cluster uh, asking for an opportunity just to engage them or for them to come and see uh, the defense industry so that they can see for themselves uh, what capabilities are available uh, in order to prevent future occurrences uh, of this nature. 
but we did not get a success. We also tried to get the same uh, people to AAD because we felt, look, this is the only opportunity we have where we've got most of our products on display. So let's get them through uh, to AAD. Uh, fortunately, the police did come uh, because for the first time this year, they were part of AAD and we are now hoping there's going to be an improvement in, in terms of our relationship with the South African police. Uh, but state security and other players, uh, we are not sure whether they were there. I don't think they would have told us uh, if, if, they, if they came. But, but there were letters written uh, to, to, to answer your, 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 your question uh, directly. Honorable Ryder, I think yours were, were just comments, sir, and, unless I'm, I'm missing, there was not a question that came out clearly. Uh, unless there is something that I missed from, from your input. Uh, Honorable Chair, the, the our board members, as you had, as I had indicated, uh, if there is any of them that would want to, to then chip in uh, with your permission, sir, maybe they can raise their hands and, and you can then recognize them. Uh, thank you very much. Let me uh, thank the Chair and, and yourself for, for the comments uh, in response to the the, the questions and, and comments uh, from the colleagues. Uh, I see um, Mr. Higgs, uh, Bob Kanyele, uh, Dr. Kanyele, he, I know he's in the meeting. Um, he may also want to make um, uh, one or two uh, comments. And uh, <clears throat> But what I am waiting for him is to tell me when is the date um, if he knows of the next uh, uh, of, of the Lekutla. Um, I know he was central in putting the Lekutla together, of course, on behalf of, of, the, of, of, of the department and the industry as a whole. All right, uh, Mr. Higgs. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Chair. And it's a great honor to be able to address this august group as this just happened over the last few hours. But I'd just like to underpin and highlight one or two things. I think there's been an excellent presentation uh, by the executive director of AMD. If we turn back the clock just over nine years to August of 2013, the Sereti Commission sat. I know this very well because I was the second witness and I sat under oath uh, for uh, two full days and uh, with national and international television cameras etc and advocates on five meters on this side five meters on that side but one of the biggest take homes from that which i'll always remember is that the point came up that in 2013 i referred to a defense budget vote two to three years earlier where the defense minister then said people understand that if the defense budget drops below 1.2 percent of gdp we will be in trouble we will be in trouble. And if we take that right way through to where we are today, we are sitting with a defense budget of about 0.7% of GDP. And I know that everybody says it's contextual, and we must understand that. But since Sereti, a number of things have happened. Crimea happened. All the uncertainty in Europe has happened. Mozambique has come up. We had our riots in South Africa. So in my mind, this, the defense budget should have gone in the opposite direction, but it's gone downwards. And I think I just wanted to register that wearing my veterans hat, because I think it's very, very important. We don't lose sight of that. It's very, very important that we've got to recognize that. And then just the second point is, in those days where the defense budget was 1.2% of GDP, the defense industry received a fair amount of money. And with that, it was able to support uh, national security. Now with the defense budget so small, even tinier for the defense industry, how does the defense industry of South Africa support national security in South Africa? And I think that uh, Mr. Ngloru uh, painted it out very, very well that the whole shift has now moved across to exports for our, our big global companies, et cetera. It's Danel, it's the SMMEs, which are totally dependent on the, uh, the big global companies. The whole focus is that our ability to export actually impacts our ability as a South African defense industry to support and not to undermine our national security. Chair, that's just one uh, very first point which I'd like to make, and I thought it was very apt at this time just to bring it so that we can just bring a little bit of historic context to things uh, from just almost 10 years ago. Then the second point I'd like to raise uh, is that of the DCAC. 
I think it's been raised a number of times, but I just want to reiterate it from my side, having observed things, having been in the defense family for um, over four decades. The reality is that the DCAC and its team, uh, Advocate Jelly, are doing a great job. They are really doing a great job. And I get very, very positive responses and, and everything from all of them. And I know that's uh, the company which I'm involved with now, RDM, gets exactly the same, including the CEO. But we've got to go out of our way. We can't expect them to operate in a situation where there's no electricity, where there's no proper computer support, where there's no air conditioning. Uh, on top of that, with the COVID lockdowns, and the COVID lockdown which affects certain things, and then de facto, they are put down. I think it's just very, very important that that is exceedingly urgent, and it's got to be sorted out. This is the, the DCAC They've, we've got the right people there, but we must empower them so that they can help make us internationally competitive. If we are not internationally competitive, we are in trouble. And de facto, what I'm arguing is that the national security of South Africa is undermined. And then just a, a, a final point, uh, which I think uh, Mr. Ndlovu also highlighted uh, quite a lot. It's the large number of um, companies in our supply chains. I think our supply chains are vital to everything. The supply chains, because of where we are today, are huge. And in our case, the RDM case, uh, as uh, Mr. Glover was mentioning, we've got 1,500 companies in the supply chain. So if the global companies do well, because we are exporting, we are competitive, we need the best in the world, et cetera, and we are supported by everything which is possible, then it allows those uh, SMMEs largely to breathe. It allows those people to have a potato on their plate uh, at night. And the reality is that that is something which we must just uh, get home to ourselves. It is not an academic exercise. The SMMEs do not depend upon a, a grant from the, uh, the government or any, uh, anything from, uh, from Danelle or from the, um, the, the taxpayer. They only operate, they are only able to function if they are not bankrupt. They need cash to function. And for them to have cash to function, the bigger companies uh, must function. And Chair, thank you very much indeed for this. I think this has been very, very good. I've been very inspired listening to uh, the broad introduction. Uh, uh, Sandili and Glover's very comprehensive uh, presentation backed up by the Chair, uh, 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 Nubasa and Glovu. And then, of course, with all the, the various questions coming in from the, the various parliamentarians. So for me, as a veteran, um, now I retired for six years, but still believe that I can contribute for a lot more, just saying thank you very much indeed, but we've got to take the game seriously. And I think we've just got to understand we could be doing a lot better. In the last 10 years, we should have been doing that, not this. And I think we've got to put ourselves together, step up to the plate, sort out and resource the DCAC and get ourselves going again to make South Africa a winning country again. We must make ourselves proud in every way possible. Thank you very much, Chair. So what you are saying is that um, this, uh, um, you are looking forward to the Huta to deal with the issues, but some issues really uh, require to be dealt with uh, administratively. They don't really need uh, a, a Lihuta to, to fix them. Like for instance, the location of the uh, DCAC. Uh, so um, the minister, I would, after Moses, Moses uh, Dr. Moses Kanyele, uh, I will then ask the, the, the deputy minister, he's also a member of the NCACC, um, just to make uh, his own comments and I'll close with, with the minister. And uh, so, because they, in my view, there are immediate um, uh, issues um, and, and, and long-term uh, issues. So we, we, some issues really can't wait because the longer they, they wait, the more it impacts negatively on, on the business side of, of the industry. We, we have taken interest in this industry for, for, for one reason, <clears throat> that the industry plays an important role in promoting and sustaining the defense capability of, of the country. That's the reason why we, we, we have our heart uh, in the activities of the industry. We, if anything, would want to see the industry, uh, you know, succeed. So, right, Dr. Kanyele, after yourself, we we'll then move to the DM and, and, and the minister who will then uh, give us her concluding remarks. Thank you to you. Um, 
Um, thank, uh, good evening, Chair, um, Honourable Members of the Committee, uh, the Minister of Defence and Deputy Minister of Defence, and um, the members of the Board of AMD, and the rest of um, the attendees of the session. Chair, um, the National Defence Industry Council will be meeting next week on the 8th at 10 o'clock um, uh, to discuss a whole host of issues, including the, um, the, the industry as to when it's going to happen, how it's going to be configured, and then all of those issues. We hope that um, um, immediately after that, we'll have a better guidance uh, uh, to communicate to the rest of the industry, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Kanyele. Um, DM. Uh, Honorable Chair, thank you very much for the privilege, but uh, I will wave. Thank you. I will wave. Thank you so much. Uh, Minister, uh, your concluding uh, remarks. No, Chairperson, thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure what uh, or which Lekotla that the Kanyele is referring to. I certainly, on becoming minister, did not know that there was a Lekotla plant. It was looking at the state of affairs. It was looking at the the state of the defense and its um, inability to get what it needed that I challenged the defense industry. In the only meeting I had access to, two actually, to representatives of the AMD, I think I even offended them because in decrying the state of the defense industry, generally, I referred to the flight of IP, but I also then undertook that when and if the time allows, that we should actually come together. My passion about this chair is that even when I was asked what my three priorities about defense was as a new M a a minister, I said the defense industry. Because I thought that if you start reworking on the defense industry, you start actually re-equipping your defense and getting it ready to defend properly that way. And if you start on having that lekota, so I want to say that it wasn't because I had any foreknowledge or had been briefed that there was a, a defense lekota that was supposed to sit a chairperson that I came in and deliberately did delayed anything. It is because for me, you anchor the defense on it, the ability of a country, first of all, to take care of itself. And the reason I'm saying I may have offended members of the AMD in particular, is that I challenged, if you are there, why are we in such a state? Because you see, I've been listening and I've been listening to the honorable member's admiration of what Ndadenzogu has said. The truth of the matter is that the ships have been lying on dock. The truth of the matter is that whether we like this president or we don't, if he can't be properly transported by his own defense force, we are a laughing stock of the world. Now, I don't have anything, Chair, that says that, in fact, the industry tried to come in and that we refused. So I'm simply saying, if we want to start off, rebuild this industry, we must also rebuild it correctly and honestly. Now, um, it is not true that we do not go out and sell the capabilities and even those that we are not sure of when we go out. I can tell you, I put up a fight in, the, in all the trips I've been at, in, in both uh, 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 India, my last visit, in, in Saudi, we just signed up. In the UK, we put up a fight on making sure that the coordination between the, you know, the defense uh, agreements that we have are beginning to be put back onto the table. There's coordination and there is mutual respect. So it is not true that the president does not do anything because if anything, on matters of any 
portfolio, a minister becomes the primary advisor of the president. And therefore, a minister who knows their game must be able to represent their department wherever they are and to report back to the president. So that is what we have been trying to do. I am hoping that we will soon, and I've given instructions in, in my office because I've been waiting um, to make sure that at least before the end of this year, there is a coordinating structure to make sure that that defense uh, uh, which I thought was necessary, at least to enable us to get to where we can begin to look at issues of innovations. Now, what I do know, Chairperson, is that other defense industries also, also invest in innovation. So it is not just the state. It is also true that India is where it is because the state deliberately has a percentage set out in their budget for innovation. And that is what puts a country there. So on that matter, we are not at odds. I agree fully. On whether or not uh, the, 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 there is lights, the lifts work or not. As a matter of fact, um, we must give credit to AMSCO. I beat them up every week, but on this one, we must say that AMSCO has put up new lifts. We must also say that AMSCO has just been in an exercise to get um, uh, 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 generators to mitigate the load shedding. So, Beat people up for not performing, but where they try, give them credit. On whether or not there is a, um, I'd, I'd really like to see the proposed amendments, but that would be simply because as defense, we have an interest on whatever amendments are being proposed. Obviously those amendments would have to be carried into parliament um, uh, hopefully via the chairperson of the committee, that would be Minister Gungubele in this instance. Now, it is important also for us to say how that, that act was structured because at that time, yes, maybe it is time to review the act. But for instance, one of the reasons why that act was very strict on licensing was simply because this country was coming out of a very terrible past. And therefore that act was tightened. And I must take that responsibility because I was a member of the committee. In fact, I think I was even responsible for that particular act when it was in parliament. It was because we did not want to see South African weapons being used in civil uh, and, and settling of citizens within their own countries. And we were trying to make sure that we are as tight as possible. We insisted then as parliament, not as the executive, it was parliament that insisted that and as you, as you uh, lodge your annual reports at the UN, the Joint Standing Committee and the Portfolio Committee will have a copy of that register. It was to get openness, it was to make sure that no weapon is ever used against a civilian citizen whether it is internally here or out there. That does not mean that we did not even at that time push for making sure that our defense stays on top of their game. It is properly equipped. Now, the only time this country has seen any serious investment into the defense, it was in that special defense. Since then, no serious money has flowed in. And that is what we, where we are standing today. We've been motivating, we have been running around, trying to even get um, buy-ins from the other con con countries. If I'm lucky, I'll go out to, and to the UAE and follow up on the need for closer and tighter uh, 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 working together between the industries here and there. We have a relationship with India, I have just come from there. We are agreed. We looked at, 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 at what they were putting on their expo. 
And it was quite interesting that, in fact, at the cutting edge of what they were displaying, your South African company was on top of it. Rutek was there. So it is not as though we, we, we are not promoting the South African industry. It is also looking at the industry when you see us down and crawling as the defense force. Why are you not using us to market your equipment? That is the question I've been challenging the South African uh, defense industry. You want to sell, you market up beautiful um, equipment. Your bulletproof vest, I was looking at a beautiful, and yet your sons and daughters are looking very shabby in tatters, but they do have you here instead of you also saving. Just as much as you are saying, ministers, take more of your time and go and sit in that committee. And indeed, since I became a member, deputy minister of the NCACC, we have curated, we have made sure that whatever is in front of that committee is promptly dealt with. We have not had a, 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 a once a month meetings. We have met for us long as the committee was advising that there is need for you to converge, we have converged. So sometimes when you sit out there and the shoe is pinching, you think the other side doesn't care and is not moving to try and help. So I would say that can we then begin to have a little bit of trust between the industry and the executive? Can we also agree that when we go out as the ministry in particular, we also have a session where we can go and sell our industries because you have supplied us with the, your products and whatever and whatever, and we do that. I'm saying that nothing prevents us from rebuilding, except the fact that uh, there is a reference to the special defense account. The special defense account can hardly support the internal activities of the defense as we speak. And so we need to be scratching our head to say, how do we then? And that is why the most important thing for me is resuscitate the defense industry, find partnership for the South African businesses, make sure that we do. And I'm taking it a step further, Chairperson. I have even augured a question at cabinet. And what out of the sales of the arms gets back into the R&D within the department itself? What comes back in to make sure that the soldier of South Africa displays the equipment that is out there? So it is, I, I just wanted to say, no, no, please trust that even though we are not talking to you, we're not running away from the responsibilities to make sure that we harang people, we harass a treasury to look a little bit more at helping us resuscitate. So for me, that industry was not going to be about um, a crying session. It was going to be about just looking at what uh, expertise we still have, what the challenges are, what, what is there within the defense industry that we can use as defense to update our systems here at home, rather than to go out there begging, because that is what we are doing. Our ships, our, our um, the Temare is always beating us up, Jefferson. Yeah, the submarines are sitting on the dock. Yes, they're sitting on the dock because nobody is coming in. And there is not enough in the kitty to make sure that we we do that which we need to do. So I'm simply saying, yes, let us have that Lekotla. Let us put in the coordinating antenna. Let us have not a crying session, but a very in-depth discussion on how we will go out there united and reimage the South Africa. I don't know what happened, uh, Kajulai. But I certainly became a minister in August. If, if there were calls to say, this is how we can help, they certainly did not reach yours truly. So I'm simply saying, maybe somewhere 
in the tube uh, you communicated and it went elsewhere, but it did not reach me because I would have reached out as feeling overwhelmed as I was when I came into the department. Because there is no way the defense is going to do their job. There is no way we are going to regain ground unless the people in the uniform and the industry work in tandem and hold the flag high. So Chairperson, I would say yes, before we break, we will have had that meeting if I have to take out a whip within my office, but we will have that planning session and hopefully just after we come back from Christmases, just after SONA, we can have that defense industry because we are also moving. We are moving very fast to try and get partnerships to our industries. And I'm, I'm tired of seeing uh, foreign countries, companies coming in and taking the bigger stake of, of our industries. Because we, we want to look at uh, the missile systems and da, da, da. I don't see anything worthy of praising there. You have a 49% which you have not used to leverage and to grow your, 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 your industry. So what uses it? So my argument would be strategic entities within the defense industries would have to be engaged also to say, no, no, not that one. The state would rather reinvest into that company and see to it that it is on there. But the defense is not telling us that this industry is also not telling us how far they have gone with their innovation, how far they are there so that we don't have to go begging for, for, for upgrades in, in, in other countries because we don't know. So perhaps I'm saying, DM, that we are still here. Unfortunately, we are here and we would really, really appreciate. It is also not true that it doesn't matter that uh, the, the, the OEM countries, uh, guy, guy, I, the truth of the matter is that one of the presidential planes was serviced, yes. Everything was fine, yes, but it could not take off. You know why? Because there was no certificate, because the local company here was not accredited. So it does also mean that we must be honest when we sit down and say, these are the challenges that we see from where we sit. What do you have that can help us mitigate these challenges? so that we can really begin to fly that flag, as I said, very high. So we will be on call, but we will also be brutally honest with uh, the South African industry so that we can help. We, we, when we engaged with the Arab Emirates, we said it does not matter that we are unhappy about the IP that flew. What is important is that those South Africans needed a job, needed to exploit. That is in the past. Now can we work and see what the future holds? And the truth is, whatever it is that we are mourning about the IP flying out of the country, it is outdated where he, it is. Now, one of the things that I find very interesting is uh, how how we are not exploiting the South African universities to help us with innovation. But as I say, because I have not been properly engaged, perhaps that is happening. Perhaps that will take us somewhere because for us to work and to forget the past, it is to say, bring in all the brain power of this industry, bring the resources to the table, enable those of us who can go to cabinet and scream for money and more money to be invested to do so armed with something. But it is not by complaining every day that we are going to be listened to. It is putting plans on the table. And that is what that Lakota is supposed to do. The how do we do it? How much can we afford in the short term? Which one industry? must be the lead and the experiment so that when we go back to begging, we know that definitely 
we are now beginning to say we are at cutting edge. Uh, we are being insulted every day. Your borders are bare, whatever, whatever. Where is cutting edge technology coming from South Africa that will stop me from running to India to go and look at what they're doing at their borders? And I had to do that because I don't know what we have. So Chair, I would end there and say to you, yeah, before much we will be in that Lekotla and hopefully it will influence whatever it is that we must take in into the next budget cycle. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I'm happy with this commit commitment, uh, Minister, that the Lekotla will take place before the end of March uh, ne next year. Uh, I think that is, that is a clear instruction to the industry uh, that their plan must have that uh, as the the target date or target period. Now, thank thank you very much for for your input, Minister. You you have just confirmed that um, <clears throat> we are all in the same team, the industry, Parliament, and, and the executive. And um, you, it, it, because we're in the same team, it's critical that we talk to each other and uh, not pass uh, each other uh, because uh, we'll lose the match, uh, as, as it were. So on, on that point, I'm, 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 I'm grateful. Uh, it's been confirmed tonight. And I'm also happy. I got excited. I was excited when I saw you. Um, you are always in the meeting. And uh, in this meeting, um, and your comments have really uh, assisted us a great deal, uh, showing that you 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 also have the eyes um, your your eyes on the ball as well. All right, but the the concern has been raised on the master plan. Um, it's two years now, uh, nothing has happened. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we need to do a follow up on that. Um, because it was launched with uh, much fanfare, um, uh, you know, it, it, it carries certain uh, promises, and uh, but nothing has come out of it. So it's really um, an, an embarrassment um, because we all say we're in the same team and we want to see the, this industry. Uh, grow and 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 really provide that sovereign uh, capability um, to the defense uh, force and, uh, and 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 the, and the country um, as, as, as a whole. So for now, we want to leave it at that. And um, uh, but we uh, are not happy that the matters uh, remain the same, largely the same. Um, and, and that there's no been any movement uh, since the last time the team, uh, the ADM was uh, before us. And, uh, and, and, and we're also happy that the minister says uh, the AMSCO building has been, uh, been the, that it's been looked at and, and that some of the challenges that have been um, put on the table tonight uh, would soon be the, would soon be the thing of, 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 the, of the past. So in other words, we are jacking up all our um, uh, systems to ensure that the, 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 the environment is enabled. With that, colleagues, I just don't want to delay uh, the meeting uh, any further. And um, we have listened to progress from the last time, and, uh, but we pin our hope on, on the, on the Lekhutla. Mr. Mare, you want to say anything, but um, I thought I was closing. No, just just a, just a, uh, to add to what you have said, Chair, I think this was a very critical, but very, very constructive and very, very important meeting for the industry, but also for the capabilities of the Defence Force. I am, I am excited about the commitment that the minister has given and that the industry has given. And, and I, I go to sleep tonight much a much better person, and I'm so much more confident about what we can achieve together. And and we as the industry can you know you know get restart this defense force for, uh, of us 
that we can that we can relive what the to that it can really have to its, its real potential. So thank you to you. Thank you to the AMD. Thank you to the minister. Much, much appreciated. I'm excited. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, we really thank you. Uh, Chairperson of the AMD, um, the CEO and all the board members and other staff members present, thank you very much. DM, uh, thank you very much. You may all uh, disengage at any time you, you, you want to. I will then, in the meantime, move to the next uh, item. Thank you very much. We are kicking ourselves out. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm finished. Okay. <laughs> thank, you, sir. thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chair. Thank you so much. But next, uh, let's deal thank with you, you Good evening. Thank you. Uh, the last item is the minutes. How many sets, uh, Nandipa? One set, Chair. Oh, this one. Meeting of the 27th of October. Uh, this is the attendance. Uh, it was a briefing by Sams. Uh, just go through the attendance register or list. Uh, thank you very much. Continue. We're looking for corrections, colleagues. We're on page two. Is Tabo back We're on page three? Page four. Another remote are you back? Oh, still out. Uh, then uh, page five. Yeah, perfect. Chairperson, you must tell Honorable Mutle elections is only end of the year. You must now do committee work. <laughs> the end <in> December. <laughs> I mean, and uh, just the uh, now page six. Is you think is vying for a deputy president post? And well, you never know. You never know. In politics, anything can happen. A week in politics is a long time. It's a long time. There's a lot of applications for that post. So I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Well, we'll support him. Good luck to him. <laughs> Colleagues, we are now at the end of the page. Um, are there any corrections? Do you accept the minutes as the true uh, record? Yeah, true. I move, Chair. Uh, that you see, there's the deputy president uh, elect. Let's <laughs> move. <laughs> uh, second, by. I second, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure my race appointed in the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> RET. You, you, you want to change me to RET now? <laughs> Colleagues, we are at the end of the meeting. Let me thank all of you for a successful meeting. It's much appreciated. I also thank my other thanks go to the support team. With that, thank you very much until we meet again. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. This was a very, very good meeting, very productive, very productive. Thank you.